Hello and welcome to episode number 16 of the After Hours Podcast. Here with me today, I have the co-founder and CCO of AOE, which stands for Area of Effect, I believe, uh, Markel Lee. How you doing? Uh, it's good to be on here, Zach. Finally able to jump on the call with you and actually do the podcast with you, man. So it's, it's on. Sweet. Yeah, I'm excited for this one, too. This has been uh, you and, I mean, I, I, obviously all the guys over there um, have been <laughs> on on the initial short list of who... I wanted to come on here, and you know this is a episode that I've been waiting on for a little bit, so I'm yeah, excited. Yeah, we're ready to kind of jump in. And I know, um, again, you had the bill on, as well as Adam, right? Few other in the space, so definitely down to kind of talk with you, bro. It's been a while. Yep, that, that definitely has been a while. Um, so I guess uh, the first question is is kind of always been, um, what was your first? What was the first thing that shed the light of esports onto you? What was the first you know encounter you had with the esports community as a whole? Uh, so yeah, man, it's, it's kind of, yeah, a long road. Cause, uh, as I talked to you before, you know, kind of started off with, with playing on like Halo, Call of Duty, um, not professionally. I was trying to get into it involved professionally. Um, but I never really knew how exactly. Um, but I started doing like graphic design and I was doing marketing, learning about marketing and stuff at uh, Texas State University. Um, and so I would run my own events and tournaments uh, within the space, actually on campus, uh, with me and, and a few of our friends. Created a uh, Call of Duty tournament. Um, it was like two v twos on, on campus, and you know, winning our own tournament. So that was kind of funny. Uh, but just kind of messing around throughout the time. And when I graduated Texas State, I really wanted to uh, again jump into the agency world, but but actually apply my graphic design and marketing to uh, gaming um, and esports, and so uh, the thing that drew me to it is I, I started working with my team, trying to create a team for me and my friends because my friends are really, really strong at playing Call of Duty Halo, and I was too. We used to just play all the time, and you know we'll see the Halo tournaments and the Call of Duty tournaments, and I was trying to get them involved with it, like hardcore. I'm like, hey man, there's an opportunity for all of us. That's a uh, a way for all of us to actually make some money doing what we love to do. Uh, but as you know, and as most people know within this space, uh, you can't start a business or a team or anything uh, massive without an actual team with you. People right. that actually hustle hard and actually put in the work, put in the time, put in the dedication. Um, so, of course, that fell through probably just like a lot of other uh, no tier uh, esports teams out there, right? Uh, and with that, I still, for myself, really want to jump into video gaming and esports. Um, and I remember it was, I forgot what year it was, but it was the first time that GameStop decided to do their expo and actually have it live and open to the public. Um, so you remember at that time, like gaming venues like E3, uh, GameStop and all the others, they had kind of like an exclusive thing. If you're not in the industry, you're not allowed to get in. Mm -hmm. uh, and because I was at Texas State, it was the first one that they was allowed to the public and it was in San Antonio. And I was like, hey, man, you know, hey, let's go. We should check it out. We should see what's going on at the time. And uh, when I went there, there was, <laughs> even though a lot of my FGC guys, uh, all my fighting game guys uh, give me crap for it, uh, one of the games that my homeboys like to play all the time, and so I played with them, was uh, Dead or Alive out of all the fighting games. And they had a they had the top-ranked male Dead or Alive fighter there as well as the top-ranked female fighter. Um, going out to this because I think at that time they were dropping out Dead or Alive 4, uh, I believe, and or 5 at the time. And so I went uh, with my friends and we went up to gaming, the GameStop Expo, went, saw a whole bunch of different games and ran up to the booth. Um, and when we was at the booth, we was playing the games and then the guy and girl came through. Uh, Manny uh, was the top ranked guy. He plays high boost, so he was really known for that. He also helps out with uh, Team Ninja. We were going back and forth with him and then Vanessa came through which is the top female and uh, I mean she destroyed us he destroyed us <laughs> it was mm -hmm. a good lesson to learning like you know we think we're good yeah. and you go against this person and they they uh, 3 0 in you every time right and you sitting there chopping it up having a good time good laugh um, learning a little bit from him learning a little bit from her 
um, and to the point where, you know, I was like, man, I really want to get into to gaming and esports, and I know that you did. And at that time, they was actually doing big events for uh, Dead Alive. You know? They did, like, a few tournaments and competitions and all that type of stuff that had big prize pools, and he was kind of famous for it at the time. Um, and he was like, hey, man, you know, I'm from Dallas. I'm, like, I'm from Dallas, too. That's pretty cool. He was like, yeah, man, there's a, uh, a local um, that happens in Dallas all the time called Absolute Battle. Um, and you should definitely check that out. You know, maybe you'd be able to talk to the guy there if you want to get into esports and actually run like tournaments and stuff. Maybe you can get in that way. And so from there, you know, kept in contact with him, learned a lot about what was going on in Dallas, and actually and went to my first absolute battle. Uh, I think, what was it? I believe it was four. I believe that's battle four. And that's where I met Jonathan uh, Panda uh, from Panda X Gaming. I also met uh, the guys running first gameplay at the top. And for me, it was like, all right, you know, I hope this, this this team out and I'll try to see what I can do to actually grow, especially since it's in my hometown and I'm here all the time anyway, even though I was living in Austin working for an ad agency. I was like, I'll just build out and do my graphic design here and see how far I can take this brand. Um, and with that, I ended up building the entire brand for Versus Gameplay as well as the entire brand for Pendex Gaming. Um, so Reggie from VGP and, and Panda from uh, PXG, um, we worked pretty much hand in hand on all the different tournaments we did locally, as well as, of course, the Absolute Battle and the Coming to Texas. And that's what got me into it. And it's, it's crazy because, I mean, I play fighting games, but I really wouldn't, I'm, I'm not going to ever say I'm really good at fighting games to tell me right. a lot. Uh, but I, I wanted to really start in like Halo and COD, but Again, a lot of my friends play fighters, so I've always had an admiration for it and, and I always looked at that community and it was a really solid community. And then when I jumped in, um, all I did was focus really hard on trying to build those those player stories, uh, build those brands, help these teams out, help these players out grow um, and get better. And I mean, that community took me in uh, with open arms and, you know, I gave back to them at all times. And that's what got me started in esports. Yeah, I mean, that is makes sense sounds sounds right <laughs> up you know I, I don't i think that's probably the first time i got that that in depth of the breakdown of how you know how your start started i guess yeah that's how you word that well, I, I have to give uh props again like i said uh manny uh from from team ninja like uh even though like i said right now a lot of people don't care for the game they're alive as much they don't think of it as seriously compared to like street fighter or yeah. injustice or mortal Kombat or smash or any or tekken or any of those right um but he was the one that was, you know, he was doing a lot within the community. He was making big moves. And he's the one that actually jump started me into esports. And again, from that position, you know, I did everything I could within um, the fighting game community. I started with grassroots, picked that up, built absolute, helped help build absolute battle up to like one of the top premier uh, fighting game events before, you know, it's in. Um, but then went to, you know, CEO and Evo, helped out with that production. Um, and then because of that and because of the stuff that me and Jonathan were doing with our production that was different than most people, even though we had two, three people running the stream, um, kickstarted me to actually working with teams and players. Um, and again, you know, getting larger and larger with my connections and finding people that, you know, have a larger reach and getting into, you know, the Call of Duties, the Halos, the, the CSGOs, the League of Legends. And of course, like I said, the Outlaws, when we get to the stuff that we did with Infinite. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so, I guess walk me through how, mm, like, how you everybody got involved on on your side because I know you mentioned Panda, you, um, and everybody else um, into the initial part of of Infinite, and then obviously. Uh, Infinite. Oh yeah, so I mean that was definitely a wild ride, like leading up to that, right? Yeah, um, and to kind of get more into that, it has to explain like exactly what me and Jonathan. Um, at Pendex Gaming we're doing, right? So when I met, first met Jonathan, I mean, he was doing absolute battle, he was doing it by himself, and he was doing some things that I thought were pretty interesting, you know, trying his best to, to run the show matches um, for the local fighters to go against bigger town people, uh, larger uh, fighters like Justin Wongs and K-Brads and stuff like that. Um, he was doing things that I thought was pretty neat. And I, I was looking at him, at his brand, I was looking at Versus Game Brothers brand, I was looking at absolute battle, and I was like, there are so many things that we could do within this space to actually make this production look higher tier. You know, all the stuff um, that me and Panda started working on 
uh, visually for Absolute Battle it was a prime example of that. Um, and then helping out with like Texas Showdown and Kumite in Texas. But with Absolute Battle, we were the like, first real ones that was actually doing like player cards, you know, actually promoting these players on stream. Um, so we was taking budgets that were pretty much zero or, you know, maybe you get a thousand dollars for helping out with this event um, and making it seem like we we're doing a hundred K plus in production um, with just two of us hardcore hammering out, like staying on stream from 10 to 10 uh, <laughs> solo, uh, me stepping away to do photos so we could crop out those, those images um, and put it into Absolute Battle. And from there, that's when, again, I was working with Absolute Battle and Verse Gameplay that helped me um, get seen by Chris Cheney. So Chris Cheney was interested mainly because of the fact that he saw what we was doing at uh, Absolute Battle and the local community and kind of what we were doing with the larger events that uh, me and Panda were doing at these big events, um, which is also, you know, another shout out to uh, Michael White too, because Michael White was with me and uh, I was helping him out and helping him grow. And he was the one that Chris contacted him. He brought him to uh, Jonathan and I, and we all started working on, you know, what is this entity that ended up becoming infinite, right? Um, I started off talking with Chris, uh, again, we're like Josh as well. Um, me, me, Josh, Chris, uh, and Brian, and a couple other people as well, we were sitting there and we were discussing and they were telling me what they wanted. And basically my job was to, again, show the brand. Mm -hmm. uh, so build a brand for infinite, build a brand for what they were envisioning. Like we went through so many iterations. Like before infinite even started, it was a whole year in the process. And I just focus heavily on like what we want to do when brands pop up. How do we want to handle that? How do we want to build the brand for Infinite and all the brands under it um, beforehand? I let them handle all the big, big top dog ideas um, while I just worked on uh, the visual, the marketing, the strategy, uh, and, and the branding behind the scenes. And when we started moving forward, and it was like, hey, this is actually about to happen. This is going to be real because it was still something I was just doing on the side and wasn't sure exactly how it was going to go. And just looking to have, you know, position as, a, again, creative director when it started. Um, when it started hitting the fan, it was like, yo, we, we, who do we want to pick up? And uh, automatically, I mean, I think I brought in like 10 people to Infinite um, at the time, you know, believing in what it was going to be at the moment. Um, definitely talking in with Panda at the time. He had a very tough choice because, I mean, he, he was born and raised in Arkansas. And it's like, mm -hmm. hey, you got to leave your home in order to come here. Uh, but there's an opportunity and actually we'll pay for you. Um, if you want to get involved, that way you can finally get involved into things outside of just the fighting game community. Um, and it, it was me having that conversation with him and getting him in a comfortable spot to be like, yo, bro, it's, this is something that could actually kickstart our careers and, and push us a little further, at least get us some contacts within things outside of just the FGC uh, and, and still be able to take care and provide for the FGC and find ways to help grow that with our connections and our networking. Um, and so that's how I brought him on uh, along with uh, the Infinite Ride. I was vouching for that man from the jump. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's a story. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's you know there's always a lot of things that happen behind the scenes, and that's what people don't normally talk about or get a sense of or understand like how hard people worked within this industry to get to where they are. Like there's a, again as we talked about this before like. There's a lot of creative people within this industry, within the gaming industry, that don't get the opportunity to share their story. You know, that don't. And and a lot of those people worked hard. Like, I mean, I remember when I remember I actually talked to Golden Boy like early in the career too, man. I mean, that dude was that guy was hustling. He was hustling hard. I remember speaking with him since like the MLG times and him working really really hard to get his hosting and his commentary up. And that guy was a beast. And, it's, it's good to see where he come from. You know, you, you, you see those people and you see them doing well, but a lot of people don't understand how much hard time work, maybe even free mo moments where you was doing stuff for free or nothing um, to get to where you are now. And, you know, it's, it's always, I'm always interested in hearing people's story on how they came up and made their way within the industry. Yeah, for sure. Because then, like, aside from the fact that uh, the behind the scenes or the come up story isn't as popular as the, the current, like, blow up moment or whatever like you get more of a um uh, what's the word i'm looking for like you, you build more of a personality for that person and even in your own light there's more like substance to them and you know you connect more with them on a, on a level like well, i i struggled to do what i was doing or whatever and this person struggled yeah. too and we went through that same learning process together whether it's the same exact thing or not 
you know i think it, it builds it's, it's it's interesting definitely interesting to to find out the hardship or maybe not hardship but the struggle that people go through uh to get to where yeah, they are bro. i mean if it, a lot of people ask about how do you get into esports i mean it's a grind you know because it's still so young and yeah. there's still so many things going on that uh it, it is like hustle hard and it's who you know a lot of times but it's still how hard you work because people remember that people see that people want to want to bring you along when they actually get the opportunity or the chance to give you an opportunity to grow as well yeah yeah for sure um so uh, past the infinite um probably aside from the fact that we've touched on this quite a bit on my podcast um, a lot of people know <laughs> about what happened with infinite um yeah, yeah. everybody there for people who don't know uh kind of splintered off a lot of us did our own things uh kind of went in our own direction um so after infinite you and the boys um yeah. i'll let you go into that started aoe so yeah. what um i guess explain a little bit about that or what that is so i mean like you said with everything that happened at infinite you know um right before all that stuff went down it was something that we were already kind of discussing that because um, as it stood, everybody else within the Infinite uh, Umbrella at the time was pretty much their own entity, except for the creative part, right? Um, and, and we noticed that. And we was like, there's an opportunity for us to actually use um, our resources and put ourselves in a position where we can help out more than just the companies on the Infinite. Like, we can actually help these teams, these, these businesses um, that want to get within esports um, we can actually help set, segue them into the industry properly. Because again, you see that all the time where these other companies or businesses come in and they have the wrong intentions and they, they execute pretty poorly because they don't really know the demographic. And mm -hmm. that's something that we were thinking about is like, yo, we, we could do this and we could make this work because there was a lot of people that want to work with us, but they couldn't because we wasn't our own company at the time and we were tied to the teams that were there. Um, so when the stuff happened with, you know, uh, infinite and and all that went down like it was our perfect time for us to step away um and go okay look this is what we want to do this is how we want to do it um let's go ahead and just kick start it and we just made that decision right away it's like this is something that we wanted to like we honestly didn't even get a uh, time and opportunity to even build much of our of, of our brand right uh, we started like it, it, uh, what is it the week or two as soon as we signed our name and said that we were business we immediately had three clients and it was out the gate just go um and it, i mean it was it was amazing feeling to know that hey people understood who you were what we could provide and trusted us to help them with their brands and so um we just jumped on that right away and right now we we where we at and it's it's been beautiful growing um from that with the team that we have yeah so so what exactly uh for for people who don't understand what what AOV or what your team does, what exactly is like your uh, the AOE's goal or um, you know your, your day to day? What does that kind of look like? Uh, so which one you want first? <laughs> uh, pro probably the the purpose of AOE and like your 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 um, preferred clientele, like who you'd be working with and things like that, and then maybe get into like what you do on a day to day basis. Yeah, so for AOE Creative, I mean, we are a creative marketing agency. Yeah. Um, uh, we focus heavily on gaming, esports, and what we call nerd culture, right? Uh, so it's, it's basically, you know, then the millennials, Gen Z, you know, all that type of stuff, that demographic is mainly what we focus on. But again, for our love and passion for gaming, um, that's what we want to focus on the most. Uh, currently, we've been working with a lot of different teams within the industry. So we've been working with a lot of the, the top esports teams. Um, on different, different on different projects and being able to speak with all of them to kind of get an understanding of what they are, where they want to take their brand, how they want to be seen, how they want to be viewed, um, and what they want to do moving forward. And, and that's been one of the most interesting things that we've been able to do is work with teams in that space um, to actually grow their brand and give them proper guidance on uh, what your brand exactly is outside of just the logo, um, outside of just the name, right? Like how do you build that story further than that? But the other companies that we want to help and other companies that we kind of help within the space are larger companies that want to get into esports or just businesses, period, that want to get esports and gaming or nerd culture, that want to understand how do I get my brand message, my brands uh, involved in this community, in this demographic, but we want to do it properly, right? We don't want to just go in and 
and throw money because as we've all seen, especially in esports and gaming, that does not work. Um, the the gaming community has a high need, as we know, um, and we easily pick out people that come in for the wrong intentions and for the wrong reasons. Um, and so we want to help guide companies that want to do it properly and do it right and express that to the gaming community, esports community about how they're, they've been there and they're still there and they just want to be there for support. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, so, so you mentioned, uh, like building a brand or like not just being a logo. What is, what is the most, um, what's, I guess the best way to distinguish or to help build a brand around a logo? Like somebody loves their logo or, you know, they, they want to make that next step and they want to start building brand. Uh, what would you say is like the best way to start to build brand? Um, I mean, so it, it kind of, I mean, let me say it kind of depends, but it actually, there's a process. Mm-hmm. Um, something that we've known with, again, as we've known before, there's been a whole bunch of esports teams within the space that said, hey, look, we got a cool logo design. We got good, you know, colors and a good word mark and all that stuff. And, but we really don't understand what that means. Um, and so the first part of that is doing the research part of things. Um, a lot of times, you know, most of these companies that go, Hey, I have a name. I want a logo down for that name. I want these colors. Let's find somebody just to create a logo for us. Um, what they fail to do is all the back end stuff before it comes to picking out what the name is, what the logo is, what the colors are. You need to sit down and actually understand what exactly your brand is. What is it doing? Um, what is this function? What are you trying to achieve? Um, how do you want to be, be perceived? Uh, what are your pillars? What is your mission? Like, what is your goals within this brand? Um, once you figure that out, and that's usually a, a lot of the stuff that we do with brands right now is go through that process. And it's very interesting because, you know, when you start the conversation, people have an idea of kind of what they are. And then you go further and deeper into exactly um, all the different points and what they're trying to achieve and running through exercises that explain, you know, do you want to be more this than that? Like, what exactly are you trying to place yourself as a business? And then at the end of the, the meeting, at the end of the conversation, there's a whole new outlook of exactly what are they trying to accomplish here. Um, and it's, it's been very interesting doing that, especially when you have uh, multiple of, like, the top decision makers in the team, and then they all have different things to say about their own brand. And then you go, okay, see, this is how all of you see the brand what is a way that we all can come together and actually make this something um, tangible that works for everybody mm-hmm. and it gets the conversation going. It's, it's the conversation most people do not have about their brand. And it's one of the most important uh, because you can have a brand all day, but you don't understand your personality. You don't understand your style. You can't really market to your community. You can't really market to your fan base. You can't really express exactly what you want and get exactly what you need back from them. If you don't understand exactly what are you following and why people want to follow you right yeah now that makes sense now if you when you have um when you when you're working with a client or maybe not or if this was to happen and you go you sit down you have a conversation you want to start to build the brand and you go past just the logo and you have a, a situation where what the one two and three person in charge all have differing opinions and they you know they don't know or their brand perceives something entirely different from what they all think you know, is, is that the type of situation where you would consider like, you know, maybe is now is a good time for you guys to go through a rebrand, get everything sorted and put put your um, all your visions on, in the same alignment? Or do you kind of just work through that and, and kind of just help them fix things? Like what is the better case scenario in that situation? Uh, the, the better case scenario is to, is to go completely through the credit brief. Mm-hmm. Uh, like that's gotcha. that 100 percent helps no matter what. Like, mm-hmm. If they all have the same opinion, then that's great. Right. Um, you can get that meeting over with a lot quicker. You can define uh, the extra fine points that you weren't able to do before. Um, and then you can take that and start going to other ideas and finally finalizing like the mood board. Like that's the process right afterwards, right? So after you understand exactly what your brand is, um, then you transition that over to mood boarding and coming up with the actual appearance of things with, before you even get to design. Um, and if they don't all agree with each other, that's an even better reason because it starts a conversation internally with them, right? Mm-hmm. It's an opportunity to go, okay, but I thought we were this. And I'm like, no, we thought it was this. And it gets them the opportunity to define that set with them as well as us, right? So we'll start the conversation. We'll give them ideas. We'll give them our feedback from the outside. 
and then have them work uh, internally to, you know, define that a little bit more while we give our suggestions throughout the process. Um, the whole point of any type of branding process is making sure that both teams are on the same page. And what we focus on heavily um, is completely different than like a lot of different ad agencies, right? We're not just going to be that once a week phone call um, with an agency that most people are used to, most big companies are used to, right? Whereas like you paying us, we'll meet you once a week to say, hey, whatever, whatever, and go about the business. Like we want to feel like a, another part of your team. Um, so at AOE Creative, we focus heavily on having those conversations, having those calls, um, discussing with you day to day, like we're actually a department of your business. Um, and that helps out with those conversations that people don't know where they're going or where they want to go. And you have to solidify that before you get to any design because you want to make sure you understand what your brand is. Do you agree on this look and feel for your brand with the mood boards before you do any designs? This is kind of what we're thinking. Here are three different options. These options all work and correlate to the things that you said you wanted your company to be. This is how uh, these are the three different ways that you can handle it or situate it or, you know, make it appear to your fan base and then go forward from there. You want them to agree on that part because then later down the road while you're actually designing, they're looking at you like, hey, we made these ideas and we made these suggestions or we may give you these suggestions because of X, Y, Z. Um, it makes a lot more sense. It makes the, the, the client understand that you're there for them. Um, understand that you're there for their business and for their team and that you're not doing what you want to do. You're doing what they want and you're actually able to visualize that. There's so many times you walk and talk to a client and you know this, um, even coming from the apparel side, right? You talk to a client and you speak to them and they don't know what they want, but they know what they don't want. And if you design something, they'll tell you exactly, this is not what I want. And you say, okay, what do you want? And I'm not really sure, but this is not it. Uh, you, you eliminate majority of that process uh, that uh, uh, option for them to say that because they're going through the whole process with you. Right. And that's what we kind of focus on. Yeah, yeah that makes sense. Um, that definitely, you know, that alleviates the, the frustration of, of doing something for almost nothing. Um, yeah. 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 So I, we'd, we'd, Bye. yeah. Um, so to, to piggyback or maybe not to piggyback to, to circle back, um, what does your day-to-day -day look like as, as Markel? What do you do every day? Um, so for me, again, with uh, the team that we're running, um, again, me and Simon uh, co-own uh, AOE Creative, and we have our team below us. And Simon pretty much focuses and works with the marketing team. I focus and work with the creatives. Um, of course, we all work together hand-in-hand. -hand, but my typical day-to-day -day is we'll come in. Usually, we crank out ideas. Uh, you remember being at the office with us before, like we'll have the wall up and we'll just throw out ideas, cool ideas that we thought about. It could be random, it could be on point, it could be with another client that we have. It doesn't matter, we just kind of crank out ideas for the day. It's a good way to, you know, get that type of flow, get everybody kind of in that, that mood of wanting to be even more creative um, and also to stay on top of the trends and the stuff that's going on. Um, after that, it's, it's more so about, you know, making sure the design team understands what their tasks are for the day, what their goals are. Um, and then throughout the day, I'm working on designs as well as my team's working on designs. And we bounce, bounce ideas back and forth, go over, review with one another. Um, and, you know, as the co-founder and CCO, uh, I do have to jump on a few calls, you know, with clients and stuff. And so throughout the days, it's pretty much working with clients, calling clients, speaking with them, as well as organizing with my team, building those, uh, building up the designs, uh, helping them focus on what they need to focus on for the day. And then, you know me, man, I go home and I still work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> It's what I love to do. I'm doing what I love. And every day is always a grind. Yeah. I mean, that is the the best and worst thing about esports. You have your days <laughs> where you love what you do, you go in, you have a good day, and then you have the day that, you know, you're stuck grinding or whatever it is. And it's just a, a long, long grind. But, you know, at the end of the day, it still pays off and you're still doing what you love. It's just a lot of time goes in. Um, always, always. It's always worth it. Yeah, um, for sure. So, so clients, um, I know you guys, um, you know, you, you're always doing cool things. You've always been doing cool things. So I know there's no shortage of cool things being worked on, but I do know, I did see recently you guys announced your, um, the project you worked on with, with nerd street gamers. <laughs> yeah, um, so, so what did that look like? What, did, what was the, the, cause I, I only know what I saw. Um, and yeah, obviously you can only get into what you can get into, but like, what did that project look like for you guys? 
Yeah, so uh, that was actually like one of our friends contacted us, let us know that uh, someone was looking for possibly rebranding stuff. It was actually funny. It was they led us led us to their. I believe they have a local host um, where they have a venue where they do different events and stuff in uh, for nursery gamers. Uh, since they do a lot of community based driven uh, events to help gamers throughout, and they said, you know, they're looking for help with their space and, and building out the space and doing design for that. And then when we spoke to them, they was like, actually, we might be looking into you guys to help us out rebranding Nerd Street as a whole. As you know, Nerd Street is a umbrella company, basically. It's a parent company. It holds a couple different companies below it, um, local hosts and like the National Championship Series, et cetera, um, and, and Lobby GG. And for them, they their logo was a pirate with skulls originally. Um, and again, they was like, yeah, it was cool um, at the time, but it doesn't actually represent um, what Nurse Street is to us and what we want Nurse Street to be, especially for the fact that it's more of a parent company. So it's not seen um, as that front facing public uh, business. So mm-hmm. they want to kind of remove that, change that up a little bit and, and revamp their logo. Um, again, started off the process, started with the creative brief. Uh, every client that we work with, we start off with that no matter what, uh, because it, it definitely helps us all make sure we're on the same page. And uh, what we do, we do a lot of research before we even start with a client. That way we have an understanding of what they do, what they've done, uh, where we think their company might want to be, where, they th- where we think they might want to go. We jump into the creative aspect of it or the creative brief part and start discussing with them heavily uh, what, what is it that you want to do, what is it you want to be. Uh, what is your net takeaway? You know, what do you want your fan base to understand about you? What do you want another business that wants to partner with you? What you want them to do, or how do you want them to perceive you? Because those are two different things, right? Um, you you have the perception from your fan base about how they see Nurse Street, and then you have the perception of businesses and how they uh, perceive Nurse Street. Um, and then going to diving a lot deeper into, you know, exactly if your personality for your brand. That means a lot. What do you want? And they they definitely want to be very inclusive, um, very like fun, but also business um, because of the fact that they're a parent company. And we dove pretty heavily into that. The next thing we did was show mood boards, kind of dictating exactly where they want to go from there, how they want to be. Look, do you want to be this very sophisticated type style, but still kind of inclusive and open and fun to the fan base? Uh, do you want to be very technical? Um, because of the fact that you own a whole bunch of different businesses under you and you're making smart, strategic decisions, right? Um, and you go through that process and you have them be on board with that. Um, and then the, the bigger process after that, before you start anything else, is going through the logo creation. And so that's where, you know, we go through, we, we chop it up, we bust through a whole bunch of different designs and, and icons and, and imagery. Um, and that's what led us to the one that we ended up going with at the end, uh, which was the Nerd Street Block. Um, and for us, it was it was a very fun project. It was a great way of uh, figuring out a way to, you know, take the old logo, but still make it into something that that's relevant. Like for Nerd Street, their biggest thing, they were North Third, basically. So in 3RD, which also, you know, in Gamer Turn still speaks or, or says Third or the nor- Nerd, if you want to read it that way, right? Um, so in 3RD was Nerd, but it also meant North. North Third, which they were in Philly, was mm-hmm. the street that they kind of started off on, um, and so we incorporated that, incorporated that still within the logo now, but made it still seem more like an E for the whole corporate as- aspect. Um, so we ended up using the three lines, three bars to kind of work as a crosswalk, but it still kind of gets that feeling of gamer, um, but also sophistication when it comes to businesses as well, um, and making the icon into a block was fun and the whole reason and point of it is because if it's a street, nerd street, then you're on the block. Welcome to my block. Welcome to my neighborhood. You know? Um, and the lightning bolt between it was also a fun way of saying that nerd street powers everything that's on that block. Um, and it, it's it's taking all those little bitty steps and explaining the story of nerd street um, through graphics and design and you know getting them a story that they can push further. So when we started off, I mean, welcome to the block is the campaign, right? Um, and then that it's a good way for them to, you know, highlight the people within the industry that's helping out the communities, that's building the communities within their spaces, uh, within their local hosts, 
that they do all around the U.S. and will be growing from there. Um, and again, like I said, we, we you go through the process with your client and you have them you know, on board with that because you want them to understand their own story too and you want them to have contributed to building their brand even if it is, you know, revamping from something old and bringing it to something new. Yeah, that sounds sounds like a fun process. But, but <laughs> it, so what it also sounds like is, um, I guess this is a slight PSA. Sounds like that's a long process. It's not something you guys do overnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's it's this a longer process than most people understand, like in esports. And that's also the other thing that we've been having to do is educate those on the process, right? Like you can you can't easily find someone um, on your your social media that might be able to build your logo, right? If a team goes out there and say, "Hey, we're looking for a logo design, make a logo," anybody can make your logo. But does that actually help and explain your story? Probably not. It's probably a really cool logo and it's not bad. There's so many great designers within the space uh, that do great work. But if you want something to actually represent yourself and speak a story behind your brand that you can actually use and incorporate um, into bigger campaigns throughout the year, um, then it's a process that you have to take. You have to take that moment to stop and think about all the back end things about your brand and the biggest question is why does somebody care about your brand and if you don't know why somebody should care about your brand then trust me other people don't know why they should care about your brand Uh, yeah yeah, so it's it's a longer process but it gets you the result that you're actually looking for instead of the quick draw um i'm going to go and just pick up any logo design or creation and then not think about uh how that actually represents me as a personality, as a business, as an owner, as a player, et cetera. Um, and so, I mean, with that process, I think we did take like a month um, to, to get to that point. And then, of course, the next month was based around building out all those assets um, for the campaign, for the business, for the back end, uh, for the video. And you, you want, like I said, the biggest thing that we would like to focus on is branding entirely. It's not just we're coming here to do a one-off logo for you. Like to us, we feel like we did you an injustice. If you came to us and all we did was give you a logo, no, we want to. You come to us and we'll break out all of the brand strategy uh, for your company, as well as your launch strategy, as well as your marketing strategy, as well as what are you doing down the road when you decide to take this campaign even further. And if you want to, how do you take that to an event or how do you take that to print or how do you take that to web? and How do you do that with video? Like We want to make sure that we're there to help build teams up from the ground up all the way through the process. And if we only do a one off for you, it's not doing you any justice and ourselves um, because that means we weren't able to put as much effort into it and that love and care that you have for your own company. Yeah, no, all, all, all that makes sense. You know, I, I wish, obviously, this is something that, um, I mean, I've dabbled in graphic design. Um, nowhere near what you guys are doing. But, like, <laughs> this is, it's been something that I've seen in the past couple of years, mostly, uh, is where it's popped up for me, is a, there just is that lack of understanding that there's so much that goes into, you know, what uh, a brand oh. speaks or, 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 you know, how you should represent yourself or the, the whole nine. Um I just there. I just wish there was a, a better way to educate. I'm, I'm sure there is a better way to educate, but I just wish I mean, more people. It's a slow process, man. Yeah, it's really, it really is. It's the same way of us trying to explain to people why esports is what it is, right? Uh, you know, people who don't care about gaming or esports look at it and be like, "There's somebody just sitting there playing a the game," and then you have to explain the passion, the drive, the dedication, the work ethic, the all the things behind the scenes that makes it happen the production, all of that, and people start getting respect for it. You know, it, it's, I mean, it's also the same with any other, almost any other business, right? Uh, I mean, as a creative agency, um, even outside of gaming and esports, I mean, you're still educating people that, hey, you know what, it takes a lot longer um, to get what you want from your brand. It takes a lot more time, effort, and resources if you want to get it right. Um, that happens in every ad agency. Um, and to do that as well in esports is, you know, even tougher too, you know, because most of these teams, they get a lot of money, but they don't spend that much on the actual brand because as of right now, it's been working for them. Um, but a lot of the top teams understand that that can only last for so long. Um, and there is something that you have to build 
um, in order for people to follow. You know, you can't just stay on a cool logo for forever and expect that to just be it. Um, and actually, it's just got to be funny, but um, I mean, this right here, this right here was the whole style guide. Um, we did the style guide explaining their whole brand and it's like 43 pages. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's taking that, that um, idea of the brand and, and pushing it a lot further than most people would, right? Most people would just give you a logo, here's your logo, here's your color maybe, um, and there you go. Um, it, but it's it's a lot more complicated than that when you want to take your brand to the next level. Yeah, yeah, the good thing about, I mean, the thing that I've noticed with style guides or one of the cool things about them is basically somebody could come in, uh, not know a single thing about the company, but know how to run a business. They could pick up that style guide and know basically everything that that company stands for, you know, in an hour, in two hours, however long it takes to get through it. Um, Obviously, 43 pages might take a little bit to fully (laughs) grasp it, but that that leaves no questions. So, like, you, you finish that and you know this is what I'm doing and, you know, they, they walk away with hopefully no questions, which is important. Yeah, you, you want people to look at that and read through that and understand what your brand is, especially if you work with partners and stuff. Like, uh, do you think like any of these major companies and don't hand people a, a style guide when it's like, hey, I want to use the ESPN brand. Well, you better read up on this document first because you're not going to throw a logo on anything and make it any way that you want to. Um, it has to be done this way exactly. And you need people to understand that your brand is precious to you and to them and that you take it seriously just like they should take it seriously. Um, and that a lot of teams, you know, they're starting to figure that out, especially with all this money and investment and getting involved uh, within the game and esports community. Um, it's the opportunity for people to be like, you know, this is this is real. This is serious. My company is serious. My team is serious. Um, and I want people to understand that because we're here to stay. Yep. 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 So that all makes a lot of sense, and hopefully, hopefully, we'll we'll get there with uh, getting the communication and the and the education to to the the masses. But obviously, that's only. Yeah, I mean, I know yeah. you guys do the same thing. I mean, yeah. y'all have to work with all different types of teams, with all different types of colleges. Uh, you know, it's trying to explain to them why their brand brand matters, why they're working with uh, Sector Six and all you mm-hmm. guys, and how they need to take their stuff seriously when they present themselves especially if these schools are trying to get more involved and do bigger things and actually start this league that a lot of them are trying to do right now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Um, so past that, uh, or, or past like a nerd street and the project as a whole, um, where, where does, uh, what's the vision of AOE creative? Like, where do you guys see yourself in, it's kind of hard to put a future timestamp on esports, but call it five years. Like what is your quote unquote end goal? Uh, for us, I mean, it's it's to continue uh, being a go-to agency within gaming and esports yeah. uh, for marketing, for graphic design, for business development, um, et cetera. Uh, for, for us, I mean, everything that we're doing right now, we, we want to stay boutique um, because, again, we want to make sure that we're spending our, all of our energy and time on you as the client or as the, any of the clients that we work with and show that we actually care about your brand. Um, so we're not trying to be huge and like hundreds to thousand people deep as a creative agency. We don't think that actually works. Um, not if you want to actually get personal with the, your brands that you work with, with the clients that you have. Um, and we feel that for us, you know, 30 people would be a good position for us where we're working on 10 brands pretty heavily, um, growing those businesses out and helping them grow a lot further and, and spending a lot more time actually building that story and building that that fan activation, uh, that fan loyalty, and uh, building the brand around different campaigns that actually work for them properly instead of just doing something that's cool. Doing something that's cool, but also um, functional and makes sense. Mm-hmm. And again, grows what you want your company to be perceived as um, to everyone looking at you. Yeah. Um, and then what about, what about for yourself? Where do you, what is your long-term goal within like the esports community if it's just with aoe that's that's totally cool too but uh i guess bigger picture if there is one oh i mean it's definitely um uh, definitely aoe mm-hmm. uh it's, it's really a, a good spot for me like i love what i do and i do what i love and i've been hustling hard since like i said i've been doing freelance for the longest i've been <laughs> grinding when i was in college doing freelance and working on campus as a designer uh this is what i want to do so 
building AOE to kind of being that is really uh, one of the major things for me. Outside of that, it's a, um, I want to do more for the community as much as possible, uh, especially uh, inner city youth as well. Um, I do want to have that opportunity to where I can help grow that. I feel like there's opportunities for people to learn how to get into esports and how to get into gaming outside of just being a pro gamer. Um, I do want to help build that up and start giving people ideas of what they can do behind the scenes, production, uh, commentary, uh, TO, uh, all that stuff that most people don't think about when they think about esports or gaming. They don't really think about, you know, hey, how do I actually run in the How, what are the other positions that I can get a job within esports? And I want to be able to help, you know, people that don't obviously get that attention, the opportunity to learn and figure it out. Um, so, for me, building that awareness uh, is, is pretty solid and something that I would really want to do. Yeah, that's good. It's a good thing to to uh, you know to, to strive for. I like that. It's definitely. Yeah, and and something else. I mean, I really do feel like again, I, coming from the fighting game community, um, I think there's definitely a lot of potential there as well. Um, I think no one's taking the, the time out because they're afraid of that community, mm -hmm. um, business wise, sponsor wise. Um, I would like to see. Uh, that community grow and build and get to a better position. Uh, so, you know, I'm trying to also figure out ways that can actually benefit them as a whole um, as the community grows and, again, support those that actually put in a lot of time, effort, and dedication within it. Yeah. Um, so just just now you mentioned you're, you put a lot of time into freelance and uh, you're, you're freelance before all this or however long that was prior. Um, yeah. Do you feel that your the amount of time and um, the 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 work you put in doing freelance graphic design and, and whatever else uh, do you think that kind of helped pave the way or the amount of time that you put into that is what helped you get to where you are um, or yeah yeah um, definitely not just one of those I mean to some extent I guess luck could be involved uh, you know some people argue sometimes it's luck yeah, sometimes it's not it, it, it does come down to who you know yeah but it also comes down to how hard you work and the reason mm -hmm. why I know the people that I know is because of the hard work that I put in and then they end up coming to me or I end up crossing their, their way um, because I was hustling hard within the fact like before, like in high school, I was working in graphic design. Um, I really wanted to learn it. I really wanted to do it. I knew that when I graduated, I was gonna go to college and learn more about it. Um, so for me, it was starting off hustling hard, working with local artists, you know, like musicians and stuff like that. that that wanted to do, you know, they mixtape or something, you know, <laughs> like uh, or party flyer or something like that. And then I went to college and started helping out with, you know, the different, again, artists there, as well as like the sororities, the fraternities, the student organizations, uh, you know, really hustling hard on trying to learn more about what they're doing, learn more about what I'm doing, learn more about how I can design what I need to do, layout. Um, you always have to stay on top of it, right? If you love your craft, you need to be working into it every time as much as possible. Um, so from there, because I worked so hard, I had a job on campus doing graphic designs for a whole bunch of different official student organizations, as well as freelancing, as well as taking classes. And, you know, I, I never stopped because it was a, you know, I'm in this position, I'm in a good spot, but I need to keep hustling and keep working. Um, and that led me to my internship mm -hmm. with, my internship um, that, you know, most internships start off as unpaid. You know, most people go and like, well, I didn't get a paid internship. But because I worked so hard and every time I finished something, I was like, yo, what's next? What's next? What can I do? How can I help? What can I do for it? And they ended up paying me within the first month. I'm like, you're our first paid intern. And I was like, all right, that's great. <laughs> so I'm going to keep hustling hard for here. Um, then they picked me up and I was doing great work for them, but it wasn't in gaming and esports. So you take that and say, okay, what can I do to get myself in the door? You know, and that's where, you know, ran into that group, saw the opportunity to reverse gameplay, absolute battle on Pandex Gaming, took that opportunity. That led me to going to CEO, led me to Evo, led me to run into PvP Live, into running into Infinite, and then now create my own uh, marketing agency within the industry that I always wanted to do in the first place. So, it, it is a hustle hard, and yes, it can be luck, but luck, luck is depending on how much you put in in order to get your chances up, you know? Yeah. Uh, you got to work hard. You, you have to put in some type of uh, 
uh, work in order to get to that point where somebody even acknowledged you to send you to X, Y, Z, which ended up dominoes effect to getting you in a position that you want to be in. Um, and so uh, hard work does pay off. And, you know, sometimes you get lucky. Sometimes you fought to get to that position. <laughs> and it's not not uh, all just on luck. It's about how much you put in and how much you really want. Yeah, I feel like it's definitely like a it's more like a sliding scale. Um, you know, as your as your hard work goes in, um, the luck that you need to get in will decrease. You know, obviously, if you do one yeah. really cool thing and you get connected with one really cool person, that is high luck. Um, and then, you know, your, your work is not very high that you put in, but if you grind, 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 you have a lot more chances to be involved with somebody. And then obviously your luck percentage that you need to, to be successful decreases. So I think sure. definitely a sliding scale, but yeah, no, I agree. It's definitely, I, I, th- I've always been a huge like advocate for hard work will always get you to where you want to be. Eventually yep. you'll get your chance. Uh, so I feel, you know, definitely on the same page there. Yeah, man. Uh, we went through some hard times to get to, trust me. Trust and believe. Like yeah. I said, uh, nah, my family hasn't really had much, so took that opportunity to say, "Yo, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna pay my own way." Um, and yeah, there was a few times where you got to do some free work if you need to. But I mean, I don't advocate for people doing free work, but I'm not gonna lie and say that I didn't in order to put myself in the positions that got me where I need to be. Um, and I mean, that's also because esports was so young and people didn't have money in gaming, you know. And it was more of buying into the dream. Whereas now you have the opportunity to where, you know, these teams uh, can actually pay you something in order to get it done. And all these influencers have money. Um, so it's always about, you know, making the, the right move for you. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, yeah, um, I think sounds like or looks like I, I mean, I covered all, all the topics that I was interested in, in bringing up <laughs> for you. So um, I don't know if there was there's any um, anything you didn't get to say that you you feel interested in saying or do you want to get off your chest or anything like that um i guess now would be that time if you have anything uh not much i mean like i said i'm, I'm just really happy to kind of be working with uh, all the guys that i have you know uh it was really great to like i said me and simon uh kicked it off first thing like we started meeting each other with infinite and um since then like we really gelled and so it's been really great the way that we've been working here at aoe um, and still working with all the, the boys from the team, you know, still got the Bill on the team, Thomas on the team, as well as uh, picking up others within the space. Um, it's It's been an amazing journey, and we continue to want to do more. And I'm actually very proud to see everyone that was in that past previous situation actually bounce back and, and go their, their, their way. So a lot of the people that we had on our team before, all the bigger teams now, um, and then, again, the stuff that we did back then helped them uh, move forward and hopefully, you know, got to teach them ways to, to look at their brands or look at their teams so they can help out with the teams that they're working with now, right? Um, and then, again, you guys have been killing it with the Sector 6 stuff and, you know, looking the best for you guys to keep going. Uh, yeah, I made some some major moves after all that as well. Everybody else within the space. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I agree. I agree with you there. I was actually just thinking about this the other day. Like, I feel like everybody kind of not everybody, a lot, like most, <laughs> most, most, I, most. I, I don't know the right word here. A, a good chunk of everybody at Infinite uh, kind of started to branch their own way. And it was not necessarily their own personal thing, but they either got involved with things or they did do their pers- their own personal thing or they, they, they carved out like you guys. You carved out your own chunk of what you guys are doing and started your own thing. But it's just, it, it, it's humbling. Is the good, not humbling is not the right word. It's a. Yeah. I know what you mean, man. It's like heartwarming. You know, it, it feels good that everybody, just about everybody figured or fell on their feet, I guess. Um, yeah, a lot of a lot of everybody on our team, like I said, went to uh, like the marketing, creative, merch, apparel, that whole section of the team, man. Everybody went to pretty good teams yep. after that. Or like you said, did their own thing or, or part of their own way and made things happen. And uh, like I said, we, we had a very talented team. There. Um, you know, like I said, we know what happened in the situation and everything, but we had great people doing great things with, uh, with you know, great vision. Mm-hmm. And good to see that they have the opportunity to express that, um, whether that's with, uh, you know, AOE Creative or if that's with an esports team or esports business. And honestly, to me, I, that's one of the things I'm, I'm most proud of. Because like I said, I brought, I brought a lot of people on that I knew um, from the industry and, and I brought them on to Infinite. And I'm glad that they were able to bounce back and get to places that they need to be in in order to keep building their career and keep them going 
Um, Cause I know some people, you know, were kind of worried about, man, am I gonna be able to stay in esports after this or anything? And, and you get to see them in those positions that they are. And, oh, happy for you boys uh, and girls, you know, uh, within the space. And it's, it's good to see y'all go somewhere and make something and continue to, to build, you know. Yeah. I just wanted to say that, yeah, it's just amazing to see those guys make it. Yeah, no, I I feel you there. Definitely feel you there. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, other than that, um, this is the, the the shameless plug portion of this this episode. Uh, so uh, you know, um, obviously, you guys at AOE Creative, you guys have your own channels, um, and then you have your personal channels. Or if anybody needed to reach out to you, uh, what would be the best way to either start a project with AOE as a collective, and then what's the best way if somebody wanted to reach out to you and ask you questions? Uh, I mean, definitely just hit us up on any of the social networks. Um, definitely can catch me um, at Markel underscore Lee on Twitter. Um, or you can find me again on Instagram, Markel Lee, uh, AOEcreative.com, our socials. Just send us a message. I mean, we're paying attention to all of that at all times. Uh, a lot of times people email us. So you can catch me, at Markel, at AOEcreative.com. Uh, send something to me. I'll send it with my team and we'll figure it out and we'll start moving from there. At it. We get emails pretty uh, pretty constantly, and it's always great to just at least meet up and chat with people. Uh, sometimes we just have great discussions with those who want to contact us and kind of pick our brains for a minute. And we're open to having those conversations with people and uh, explaining a little bit more about esports and gaming and your involvement and, and ways that we can help out. Yeah, for sure. That sounds 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 good. People definitely definitely hit up Markel if you're interested in anything creative or marketing and he'll put you in touch with the right people um but I other than that. what oh sorry what i say appreciate it Zach. <laughs> oh no no problem um other than that um i will go ahead and end this one here um if you've made it this far and you are still listening and haven't followed subscribed commented or whatever it is on the platform that you're listening to please please be sure to do that because it helps me out a lot and um, as always i will catch you all in the next one see you later